Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto x Ariga Discordia x Hachishaku Sama, part 6. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Zero Rashi Uchiha. Subscribe if you enjoy the video. Let's start the story. The Boro, King Chrome, and Jinyul all stand together watching their combined armies march. Jinyul brought forth 12,000 Urukase and Orcs. Along with other monsters and beasts as they all marched into Austria to fight Naruto's army and to capture the forces of light. Aboro brought forth every bio-weapon, terrorist groups, and rogue demon Kanoichis to assist her in battle against their enemies. Ink Chrome brought forth his army as well 1000 orcs all of them were ready for battle. The combined armies would halt as Aboro narrowed her eyes, seeing their enemies had appeared on the battlefield. Three divisions of the Dark Alfuzu Empire all appeared in their glory. The fourth division showed up with countless of the undead. Noob Sabat leads them as commander, Ariga Shakusama decides not to make her appearance yet. Chloe riding on Ripter would appear beside Satachi. Both of them glared at the enemies in front of them. Both sides would glare at each other. Ariga Shakusama made her appearance as she is currently on Delameter. Shocked by her appearance they were, along with a very giant beast she had at her side, made them shiver down their spines. Even the combined forces felt terrified having to fight that. Th that's Ariga how did she get like that? Thought Aboro with fear on her face feeling very intimidated by the Dark Elf Queen's appearance and the beast she's riding. Jinyul and Chrome also had looks of fear, and from the bottoms of their dark hearts, they were afraid. Aboro saw her other two allies starting to get cold feet only for her to remain calm and not let fear stop her. You fools. Don't get cold feet now. We can take her together. And defeat her army. We can do this. Aboro said with both of them now regaining their confidence. You fools, you honestly think you can defeat the full extent of me and Nerukun's empire? You are sadly mistaken Aboro, you and the rest of your friends will not live to see the end of this day and the rise of our empire claiming Iastja as ours. Ariga Shakusama said having heard Aboro who winced then scowled. It doesn't matter you giant bitch. You and your brat Naruto may have outsmarted and defeated Volt, Kiryu and Kyle. But we will not let you have that chance. My revenge upon Asagi will not be denied by the likes of you. Your pet dark elf assistant. Or that little boy you call a husband. Aboro shot back at her with a snarl. We will defeat you and claim you all as Sag's toys and slaves. Jinyul growled with King Chrome nodding in agreement. Ariga Shakusama laughed darkly at that. How amusing, Volt said the same thing after we turned him into a bitch and broke him as a whore now. Remarked Ariga Shakusama with the three going wide-eyed at that revelation. You did what Aboro said with clear shock in her voice. You heard me, Volt is nothing more than a bitch in heat now, too bad none of you will join him in his own hell. Well my dearest deliver all three of you into hell, where you will meet Kuryu and Kyle. Ariga Shakusama says with a dark smirk with Aboro scowling at her in hate. Duck you Ariga. Duck you. And your brat. He looks cute by the way, maybe when we defeat you, maybe I'll have him to myself and show him that he should be with a real woman and not an overgrown thunder thigh dark elf bitch. Hissed Aboro as killer intent skyrocketed from Ariga Shakusama. Chloe flared her killer intent, wanting to rip the bitch apart. Same with the other females who wanted Naruto. As if Narukan will be interested in a manipulative bitch like you. I really wanted to sit back and watch the battle and save my fight for Celestine. But after what you just said. I'm going to collect your ducking head and have it as a trophy. Attack them. Leave no crawling ant alive. Ariga Shakusama said in a demonic voice as she instantly jumped off of her steed with her mace in hand and charged with her division following her with the intent to kill Aboro. Aboro widened her eyes in fear seeing Ariga Shakusama come for her. It was at this very moment, Aboro knew. She done ducked up. You heard Ariga Shakusama. Let's kill those sons of bitches. Growled Chloe already wanting to vent her anger upon the enemies as she charged with her two Dedrick daggers out. Attack on the Empire. Yelled Itachi, drawing out his sword charging as the army of Anubis behind him growled and howled, following him along those who were in the division joining the attack. The Shirai Ryu embraced danger. Said Scorpion charging with his sword and preparing his spear. Reptile started running also, Trowa activated his heavy arms armor and aimed his dual miniguns at the army with Maya beside him with her sword, Wu Fei activated his Nataku armor and brought out a trident. Let's get to killing. Said Zabuza hefting his sword and charged with the Shadokans following him, Zenaku was riding Ralph joining with Zabuza. Yujito gained access to her Bijuu power and suddenly grew long claws and grew two blue tails running with Claudia and Alicia. Quater turned on his Sandrock armor and unsheathed his dual curved blades. Naiko Robin would follow along with them. Let's do this for Naruto-kun. Said Haku, who charged Senbin in her hands as Eviscerator, and all Zenimers charged with her screeching, Fu grew wings and gained access to her Bijuu power and started flying, Sub-Zero created dual ice axes. Berlin Kuei. He shouted. Alright let's send these bastards to hell. 
said Duo turning on his decent hell armor readying his beam side. Mission accepted. Said Hero now in his wing zero armor with a beam saber out and shield. Scarecrow would be holding a canister full of his fear toxin. Let's explore this terror together. He said running with them. Seeing all divisions and forces come at them. Crush them. Yelled a Boro as everyone charged. They would now clash. Urigashaku Sama smashed and bashed any nearby groups of Urikase and orcs with her mace sending them flying, while some were smashed to pieces. As she continued to smash with her mace sending all her enemies flying, eight orcs charged at her with long spears. She saw them try to attack her from all sides as her hair started to become tendrils and became barbed hooks as they lashed out and ripped apart the orcs who attempted to stab her. She bashed her mace on the ground, causing a ground pound knocking all enemies away as she focused her attention on a boro. Itachi and his division thrusted into the many hordes of Urikase as the army of Anubis broke through their defensive shields and began attacking. Itachi turned on his man Jekyo Sharingan and animated his Susanoo and began attacking them with a flaming sword, the Tasaka Blade. Reptiles would fire a barrage of acidic force balls melting their armors and killing them in the process. Maya would swing her sword at an orc that had a battle axe chopping off its head while advancing further with some Anubis soldiers following her for support. Drowa unleashed all his arsenal on the enemies blowing them up and shooting them. Giant trolls and giants would be gutted and burned by Wu Fei's Nataku armor. One orc managed to behead an Anubis soldier, killing it in the process causing a few to do the same thing. Behead them. Said a Uruk High Prefect who just beheaded another Anubis soldier. Archers. Fire at will. Shouted an orc with war paint as groups of orc archers with bows and crossbows fired upon groups of Anubis soldiers aiming right for their heads. Ralph had trampled them and snapped at one orc with his jaws tearing him to shreds, archers instantly fired arrows at him, which hardly did no damage to him, in return Ralph fired his quills upon the archers, killing them before howling and charged at the next group to kill. Zenaku swiped his crescent blade left and right and hacked any nearby orc, uruk and demon that came his way. Zabuza hacked and cleaved many demons and orcs, he even performed the hidden mist jutsu to massacre them in the mist. Yujito clawed and slashed her claws at the Urikase that attempted to attack her while landing and recovering. Mouse hairball. She spat a blue fireball at a group burning them. That Khan swooped down and grabbed many orcs and demons ripping them apart in the sky. Squid Khan strangled and crushed with their tentacles. Sumo Khan smashed and bashed with their strength. Samurai Khan sliced and diced. Crab Khan's clipped some in half for pieces. Ninja Khan's attacked with their weapons. Razor Khans enlarged their claws and struck several of them in pieces. Mantis Khan cleaved with their scythe blades. Mini Khans ate as many shadows as they could and grew in size and devoured the orcs. Claudia and Alicia stood side by side with swords attacking any in their path. Robin would use her devil fruit powers to create clones of herself and use her powers to snap the many necks and limbs, plus snap their spines. A few surrounded her as she brought her arms to her chest and behind her a giant pair of legs appeared and crushed those that surrounded her. The war was getting intense minute by minute. King Chrome would lead his forces to battle wielding a double-edged war axe. However before he and his forces could push forward his troops were decimated by a light whip of some sorts, and the source came from Chloe with Richard behind her as backup. The Dark Elf Beauty wishes to challenge me. King Drome said, leering at Chloe who looked at him with disgust. The orcs are pathetic, nothing, but brainless duck pigs who think with their gross dicks. Chloe said expressing her hate for orcs. Heisty. I like my women like that, you will definitely be my next concubine. King Drum says with a dirty leer with all his other orcs all having leers at her. I think not, I'm a married woman with a child. Chloe said with purple markings appearing on her cheeks and her nails lengthened into claws and her canines lengthened. Married or not. I will claim you as my next whore. King Chrome says commanding his troops to get her. Chloe lashed out a poison whip from her fingertip beheading them, surprising the orc king. I must really thank Lady Arigashaku Sama for making me a bit special like her, and Erukun for making me into a Dayakai. Chloe says with killer intent flared. And the air around them became thick. Chloe's eyes flared blood red as she started snarling animalistic and fear alike. As it terrified the Orc King and his forces. The Ripter who was watching had smiled in which she got from her mate Ripper. Chloe's skin would be white and furry like as she grew the mouth of a dog. As she started to glow into a pink light and shot up into the sky and crashed back down causing a shockwave and explosion knocking many back, as in place of Chloe was a giant white dog demon that growled and howled into the sky. Many paled at the sight of Chloe's transformation. King Chrome instantly dropped his axe and ran like the coward he was seeing that he did not stand a chance. Chloe barked and growled, chasing after her prey. She stomped and crushed any nearby orc and uruk even clawed at them and bit them while chasing the king. One of his orcs got knocked away and sent his way knocking him over as he fell. 
he widened his eyes in fear and horror, seeing Chloe leap in the air and open her mouth full of fangs and roared. This can't be happening. Were King Chrome's last thoughts before Chloe's jaws chomped on him ending his life. Send in more reinforcements. Yelled Jinyal as more and more demons, beasts and orcs came, giants and trolls came as reinforcements. The Boro's bio-weapons and terrorist mercenaries and even machines started to attack. The Boro was fighting with her claws, slashing and killing Anubis soldiers. Urigashaku Sama leaped towards her with her mace in hand and nearly took a Boro's head clean off as she barely dodged. The Dark Queen and a Boro collided blows with their weapons while glaring at one another. The Viscerator and his Xenomorph horde swarmed many and killed as many. Aku would breathe an ice-cold breath that froze anything in its path into solid ice, as she manifested two flurries of whirlwind snow to slow down the enemies. Sub-Zero would hack and freeze any orc, and Yurik High, a troll tried to attack Sub-Zero with a club only for the scorpion to shoot his spear at the troll's head with it going through. Dead over here. He yelled. Beasts of Hell slashed and hacked with Wing Zero besides him doing the same thing. Scarecrow would toss fear toxin bombs at the many orcs, causing them to inhale the gas and instantly become in fear as the man had a sickle and chain and started slitting their throats. Who was in the air with Bat Khan and she fanned her scale of dust upon the enemies. More and more monsters charged as Noob Sabit used his void-like attacks at the monsters as undead soldiers attacked them. Alamander would snake its way across the battlefield crushing and eating the orcs. The Boro continued to clash with Arigashaku Sama, who the Boro would attempt to lunge and swipe her claws only for Rigashaku-sama to bash her mace against a Boro's stomach, making the woman cough blood and feel three ribs broken. You bitch. A Boro cursed getting back up and uppercut her claws cutting Rigashaku's right arm off that she had her mace in. The Dark Elf Queen snarled seeing her arm hacked off but smiled growing another arm back and the armor became intact which shocked a Boro. I don't need my mace to finish you off. Said Rigashaku-sama as her nails extended into long claws. Holy shit. Though Abora was surprised. Rigashaku Sama roared and started spinning in the air with her long claws out, ready to shred Abora who ducked and evaded them. While this was going on, Shizun is currently fighting a Yurik High with a war axe who kicked her and attempted to cleave her only for a black blur to jump at the high and rip his neck open. She widened her eyes seeing it was Ripper who saved her. Wait if Ripper is here then so is, look. Something is coming from the sky. Yujito shouted. The red armored being was making its way. Robin who was busy fending off three giant trolls, trying to fight them back with her powers, that was until a red blur flew past them cutting them from the torso down. Looking shocked she turned to her savior who resembled so much like Uzumaki Shredder, her cheeks blushed realizing who saved her. Am I late? Said demon Uzumaki Shredder, who heated up his heat rod whip. As he turned towards the many forces who flinched at the sight of him. Now you all shall taste the terrible beauty of true power, and you shall be destroyed. Demon Uzumaki Shredder says charging at the forces with his heat rod whip. Rigashaku Sama smiled seeing her husband join the battle. As did Aboro who was shocked that Naruto had arrived, she backed away as she saw Rigashaku Sama focus on her. Aboro narrowed her eyes and growled at Rigashaku Sama, who also charged with her extended claws. Chloe who reverted into her regular form, looked happy seeing Naruto finally here on time. As she continued her purge upon the orcs. Turning into her hybrid form turning into a 10-foot white werewolf snarling and growling as she clawed and ripped apart the fleeing orcs who were terrified of her. Demon Shredder Uzumaki spread his wings and charged with his heat rod whip heating up and lashed it out across in an arc slicing them by the waist. The Tachi charged with several Anubis soldiers following him for support, pushing through another defense of the Yurikai. His enemurfs continued to savagely attack their prey, while some were not lucky when Aboro's machine mechs fired weapons and used flamethrowers burning them to death as they screeched in horror from being burned. Some had also swarmed the mechs and began spraying acid at the machines melting them. The viscerator was hacking and slicing the terrorist soldiers who had guns drawn and were butchered in a horrific way. Most of the enemy soldiers had successfully beheaded the Anubis soldiers. One Yurikai jumped on an Anubis soldier, stabbing it in the face. The Jackal Commander and many more of its brothers clashed against the orcs, trolls, and Yurikase weapons clashing. Rigashaku Sama countered and exchanged blows with Aboro who also did the same, the Dark Queen's hair extended and grappled Aboro's arms and lifted the woman in the air, punching her heart in the stomach three times making the woman gag and throw up from the intense pain. And delivered another punch to the face this time sending her across the battlefield. The Boro struggled to get up as she was bruised up and banged up, looking pissed as she found the strength to stand and ready her claws, while Larigashaku Sama walked slowly to her with her nails still extended into claws. Larigashaku Sama flared her thick yakai aura as her eyes gleamed a murderous red. The Boro glared back as if she was determined to win and defeat the Dark Elf bitch. And without saying a word they clashed again causing a minor shockwave. 
Demon Shredder Uzumaki would stand there after impaling an orc with his plasma claws. As he glanced at the enemies in front of him who were fearful of fighting him while some wanted to take him on. Come at me. I wish to test my newfound power and skills against all of you. He said with a deep sinister voice and like that they all charged at him, armed and ready to attack. Naruto smiled under his armor. His plasma canisters mounted on both bladed shoulder guards suddenly charged up as he opened fired a long-range blue energy beams coming from both plasma cannons, blowing off some of their heads clean off, firing large holes through their stomachs and armor, shot off their arms and legs as many of them screamed in pain while some died from the more brutal attacks. He retracted his heat rod whip and brought out his mini gun and started firing away while shooting hidden missiles from compartments from his armor, like his shoulders, torso, thighs, and legs. Blowing them up in the process. He spread his wings and hovered in the air and flew forward, activating his flamethrower gauntlet as jet flames were released incinerating the enemies to ashes. The enemies were starting to become fearful of Demon Uzumaki Shredder. He was too powerful for them to handle. He then brought out his beam saber and activated it as the blade glowed emerald. Jinyal, who appeared beside his forces, glanced at Demon Uzumaki Shredder as he brought out his demonic greatsword. It will be I that will defeat you and your empire. Boy. I know you are in that armor of yours. Said Jinyal while Shredder looked at him. Big words coming from someone who's going to die today. Demon Uzumaki Shredder shot back with Jinyal frowning. I don't understand, how can a boy like you not side with us, where you can have any woman you want at your disposal, you shouldn't have to kill us, you should be siding with us. He said, and do what? Become a sick rapist like you? Like Volt? Kiryu? Or that bastard Kyle? Duck that. I'd rather be a gentleman than become something so low and trash. Demon Shredder Uzumaki had spoken in a harsh voice. Pathetic. It's a shame that you will have to die. But don't worry I'll take care of your dark elf whores, especially the blonde one seeing that she's a beast. He said with Demon Uzumaki Shredder releasing massive killer intent as his armor suddenly glowed with red chakra. Wrong thing to say. It will be a cold day in hell if I let you touch Chloe. Said Demon Uzumaki Shredder as he charged with his beam saber as Jinyul prepared himself. Jinyul swiped his sword only for it to be cut in half by the beam sword as he looked in shock that his demonic sword was destroyed so easily. He then summoned a lance and attempted to joust. Demon Uzumaki Shredder dodged it and shot fiber whip cord from his wrist, catching both Jinyul's wrist and yanked him towards himself while preparing his plasma claws and swiped them across Jinyul's chest, who yelled in pain looking down at his chest, seeing the plasma scars on himself. Glaring he charged at Demon Uzumaki Shredder in anger. How dare you? He shouted in rage trying to swipe his claws at Shredder who dodged and evaded only for Shredder to give him a quick kick to the stomach, making him grunt and hack up a little blood. Before he could recover Demon Uzumaki Shredder kicked his face and sending him skidding across the battlefield as he followed after him. Damn you, you son of a bitch. Jinyul growled with his hands glowing dark red ready to blast some demonic magic at Shredder, but what he was not prepared for was when Shredder flew past him and a blur plasma claws out. Jinyul would drop to his knees feeling his stomach cut open and his left arm sliced off. As blood leaked from his mouth. How is this possible? How am I struggling with a brat? He thought, turning his head slowly. He saw demon Uzumaki Shredder just stand there looking at him menacingly. Fear had started to consume the demon lord. He looked at his many demon armies, Urukase being massacred and killed left and right by the dark elf Yuzu Empire's forces. He then looked towards Aboro who was still having a hard time with Arigashaku Sama. He had thought of what he should do try and beat this boy who is much stronger than him. Or should he leave and escape with his life and go into exile thinking of his plan to capture Princess Knight. Let a borrow fall and suffer while he escapes as he decides to run and creates a portal to escape. Didn't take you for a coward genial. You will not get away from me. Especially what you said about Chloe. Growled Demon Uzumaki Shredder raising his arms shooting his wrist blasters at Jinyul's legs blowing them off. Screamed the Demon Lord falling on the ground no longer feeling his legs. He crawled as he saw Demon Uzumaki Shredder walk to him, opening up a compartment in his chest. Going somewhere you piece of shit. Demon Uzumaki Shredder said now behind him. As he started to charge the red sun orange energy beam in his chest. Jinyul looked frightened as he continued to crawl for his life. Enjoy the real hell Jinyul. Demon Uzumaki Shredder says as he releases his devastation beam. No. Screamed Jinyul as he was consumed by the devastation beam erasing him along with his blood-curdling scream that echoed throughout the battlefield. Nothing but smoke, ashes, and a large deep crater. The Bora was smacked into a boulder looking even more banged up. As she recently heard Jinyul scream meaning he had died. Damn it all. She cursed mentally and thought as she barely couldn't stand, looking at her weapons, her second claw on her left hand was broken, while her right claw still remained. Her battle suit was damaged. She looked at what remained of their army that was quickly being destroyed easily, overwhelmed by so many. 
Rigashaku Sama stood in her path, was that your best? She commented on summoning her mace. Aboro glared up at her. I think you were once a taman and Rigashaku Sama picked up Aboro by the neck. You've lost. Your allies are dead. Your organization is no more. You are forsaken, and now you will feel the wrath of our glorious empire. Said Rigashaku Sama looking at Aboro with a bored look. I will not be denied vengeance upon Asagi. She snarled with gritted teeth. Asagi Agawa. She's no longer your concern anymore, once she is turned into a dark elf, and will be a concubine for my husband. She Rigashaku Sama only for Aboro to spit in her face. Duck you. You filthy dark elf bitch. Aboro growled while Rigashaku Sama hit her mace against Aboro's stomach, causing a few loud snaps to be heard. She broke more ribs. Aboro screamed in pain as she was tossed to the side. Rigashaku Sama wiped the spit off her face. Disgusting. She commented walking towards Aboro who withered in pain clutching her broken ribs. Before she could raise her head, her head was stomped into the ground twice by Rigashaku Sama, pressing her head into the ground hard, making her scream more and more, as if she was feeling her head being crushed. The dark green took her foot off of Aboro looking down at the beaten and defeated woman. Now what was that you said about making my Narukun love a real human woman? Like yourself? She asked, gripping her mace. What the duck are you waiting for? Just kill me already. Spat Aboro hating to admit defeat. Not so fast. Arigashaku Sama says, raising her hand discharging lightning from her fingertips, shocking Aboro. Do not worry, I'm not going to kill you, I have other plans for you once we take you back to my castle. She said with a sinister smile ceasing her attack. Then do what? Make me become a dark elf whore to your brat of a husband spat Aboro. No. I have something planned for you. I originally intended for you to die, but I can give you a fate much worse than death. Said Rigashaku Sama with a vindictive smile as she bashed her mace on Aboro's head, knocking the woman out. She summoned two bat cons. Take her back to the kingdom and the dungeon. She commanded as they grabbed Aboro and took to the sky heading for the kingdom. As she now turned and watched her empire destroy the army that remains. What remained of the Yurikase, orcs, trolls, and any other monster. Including Aboro's rogue Kanoichis now realized that they are the losing side and saw that it was pointless to fight them all. And with their leaders all dead they decided to retreat. Don't let a single one of them get away. Kill them all. Demon Uzumaki Shredder said after beheading a orgy with his plasma claws. You heard him. Kill them. None of them will be spared. Commanded Itachi as all Shadokans, Xenomers, an army of Anubis, charged at the remaining escaping forces and massacred the rest of them, cutting off their escape. Demon Shredder walked towards Chloe and Rigashaku Sama. We did it. We finally won the war. Chloe cheered as everyone else cheered in victory. I wouldn't say that said a familiar voice as they all turned to the source of the voice, as it was none other than Celestine Lacrosse wearing gold armor and mounted on a white horse. And behind her were legions of the Thalmor, including the Taman and Kinoichis, and all of her other allies. So you have come at last Celestine Rigashaku Sama says with a smile looking at her rival who couldn't believe her appearance, as did no one else. They may have won the battle, but the real war begins here. The fate of Ostia now rests in Celestine's hands, that is if she could defeat a rival and her forces. She prayed to whatever god that could help them win this war and save the Ostia from what Arigashaku Sama will do. So you have come at last Celestine Arigashaku Sama says with a smile looking at her rival who couldn't believe her appearance, as did no one else. There was ten silence from Celestine along with her allies who couldn't believe Ariga's appearance, along with the many allies she had at her disposal. From dog demon soldiers to shadow creatures and black clad creatures that she knew no knowledge about including these lizard-like creatures with curved toe claws, also seeing the big black one with the gold streak look at them with an insane smile. A massive giant snake that rivals the size of mountains, men, and women in her ranks, she has humans too. A undead army, but what shocked Celestine the most was seeing her former allies Claudia, Alicia, Prim must not be present, but Maya. As a dark elf her emerald eyes widened to the core seeing her former friend and ally as a dark elf. Asagi, Sakura, Murasaki, Ingrid, Yukikas, and Shiranyui, Rinko, and Emily eyed Naruto, Chloe, and Itachi, along with the rest of the inner circle. So who do we get? Asked Sakura holding her two tantos. Me and Ingrid will handle the one in the armor. You and Yukikas handle Chloe, Murasaki, and Rinko will deal with the red-eyed man. Asagi says keeping her eyes on Naruto who's in his armor. And us. Shiranu asked as she eyed Zabuza. Hide him if you want, Emily can back you up for support. Asagi said as they all nodded. Bloody Alicia Maya what's going on? Why are you all on the wrong side? Asked Ruuru the halfling who held her battle axe shocked to see her friend siding with the enemy. And where is Prim? Questioned Kagaya who was looking at Rigashaku Sama. Celestine remained silent. She wanted to hear from her former allies and wanted to know why her dear friends were siding with her worst enemy. They didn't look like they were mind-controlled or not under Riga's influence, it was as if they were working with her willingly. 
Riga Shakusama turned to Claudia and gave her a nod to speak. We are on this side because we chose to, and as for Prim she's back at the fortress safe. She didn't want any part in this war. Riga Shakusama is not our enemy. Answered Claudia with many on Celestine's side blinked and had a look of disbelief. How can she not be the enemy? She's evil. Questioned Kagaya now because she's not. The real enemy was Volt and his allies. Answered Maya this time. Celestine blinked at that, so it's true about Volt. How can you be certain? Asked Asagi with a frown. Let's start with the events during my absence. How Volt took over my fortress after my supposed death, plotted to make a SAG's empire by forcing all females regardless of their age with no say in this, are forced to have SAGs with men and beasts alike against their will. Ariga Shakusama explained, with many looking shocked. He was targeting me and Chloe first, but he didn't know we left before he could, he wasn't just targeting me and her, he was also targeting all of you. She pointed at Celestine while Ru Ru and Kagaya looked at her in shock. How can you be sure? Volt would never turn on us like that. Celestine says, oh really? Oh, that's right you were the one who hired Volt to defeat me and my kingdom right Celestine. Did you know that he was going to backstab you and betray you? And make his dreams come true had me and Chloe not left to raise and teach Neru come my husband. Did you? Ariga Shakusama asked looking directly at Celestine who remained silent and that's not all. He had allies within your ranks. Who became traitors and plotted to tape your comrades. Added Riga Shakusama with both Kagaya and Ruru looking shocked, then looking at Celestine who turned towards her former allies. You don't mean Celestine says, but refuses to believe it. Yes yeah, Celestine-san, Glaive was in Koroinu he was a traitor he killed his own son and tried to tape me against my will. He would have succeeded if it wasn't for Naruto-sama and Chloe-sama. They saved me and exposed his intentions. Spoke out Claudia with disgust in her voice at the mention of Glaive. Our minister was in on it too. He was going to tape me and Prim Chan and even was going to give away our nuns, bishops and female knights to those demons, imps and members of Dot if it wasn't for Naruto-sama and his kingdom we would have been conquered. Alicia joined in explaining her reasoning. And you Kagaya and we killed a former friend of yours, he was a part of Dot I personally had him and his hive of insects burned. Itachi said with her eyes widening. Neither of them couldn't believe it. They had traitors in their ranks. So the oracle has spoken truth the fate of Ascha Kagaya says. What oracle? questioned Ariga Shakusama, the oracle that foretold the fate of Iostia, about you becoming tall and much more ruthless, and the plot to destroy Iostia and turn any female into dark elves. The one named Naruto is a part of this helping you. She explained with Ariga Shaku, and company looked intrigued. The tall dark queen began to cackle. Who said I was going to destroy Iostia? I am going to conquer it. Me and my husband both will conquer this world and the elemental nations when we return. With the rest of you becoming dark elves and renouncing your former human selves. Nothing you do is of your own choosing. Ariga Shakusama replied with a big smile. We will not become filthy dark elves like you Ariga. You can forget it and rot in hell. Glared Asagi with the dark elf queen cackling more. I have decided your fates and I will make it so. You all are nothing but future dark elf concubines to help and restore my husband's clan and revive the dark elf race. Ariga Shakusama shot back. We will not fall and lose to you. Humans and elves together will stop you. Celestine says with defiance. You think you and your petty alliance can defeat me? My army? My loyalists? Ariga Shakusama questioned with Celestine glaring. The light of Ostia will help us defeat you. Celestine shot back. I am Ostia. Except it will be dark. Ariga Shakusama says. I have waited a long time for this moment, Celestine. The light will not protect you and your alliance will be overcome by my empire. And now is that time. For us to finally battle, you will kneel before me, I am so looking forward to making you submit to me and my husband. Ariga Shakusama said, gripping her mace. We will see about Ariga. Celestine says unsheathing a sword made of light. Briostia. Celestine says charging as her allies followed her to battle. Till the male enemies, also this Thalmor. But as for the females, spare them and defeat them. Ariga Shakusama says as she charges at Celestine as her allies. Naruto, Chloe and Itachi followed her. Both Celestine and Ariga Shakusama charged with their weapons in hands, yelling out battle cries. The skies became dark and thunder rumbled. The moment they clashed their weapons glaring at one another, a big shock wave erected and shot up into the skies, making the sky of Ostia divide. The army of Anubis charged at the Thalmor. Elven knights, human knights clashed with them also. Xenomers and Ripters along with Ripper cornered a few male knights. Thalmor agents who are mage class used flames, sparks, and frost at the Shadokan. Two elite Thalmors burned some Xenomers. An elven knight beheaded an Anubis soldier making a turn to sand. Ruru charged and beheaded some of them too. Behead the dog demons. 
she yelled out as those who heard her did exactly as that. Itachi slew and slashed some Thalmor and elven knights with his katana coated with Amaterasu flames. That was until he encountered both anti-demon Kinoichi Murasaki and Rinko. So you both wish to fight me. Itachi says, looking at them with his Sharingan. We will defeat you, your family king and queen. Said Murasaki holding her great battle axe with Rinko tightening her grip with her katana sword. We will see about that, Itachi replied as they both charged at him, and he charged at them as well, fighting both of them head on. Zabuza is currently clashing with Mizuki Shiranyui with their weapons clashing and making sparks. Haku is fighting Kagaya with Maya by her side. How could you become a dark elf Maya? How could you betray and follow Riga? Questioned Kagaya holding her mage staff. Your fate will be the same as mine, Kagaya. Surrender now. You and Celestine should be thanking Naruto-sama and Ariga shaku sama for what they've done, they practically saved us all from a fate worse than death. They've done more good than Celestine should have, had she found out about Bolt's true intentions and the plans he made for us, including on getting rid of the traitors, we who were under our noses. Maya says holding her sword while Kagaya remained silent, but spoke again. How does it feel to betray your own race? Kagaya asked, it feels good. Maya replied, lunging at Kagaya who knocked Maya back with a flow of wind, Haku breathed an ice breath at Kagaya who cloaked herself in fire protecting her from the ice. Yukikiz and Sakura had engaged against Chloe who is currently in her witchblade form, cackling and giggling maliciously as she swiped her extended wrist blade at the two Kanoichi who evaded. Sakura lunged forward with her tanto blades and tried to slash at Chloe who dodged and evaded, Yukikiz was trying to get a good aim with her akimbo guns, but Chloe was so damn fast that she couldn't aim. Both weapons clashed and caused sparks. Chloe pushed Sakura off and swiped her long blade at Sakura who ducked only for the blade to cut some of her hair which made Sakura angry. That was not nice. Sakura yelled looking angry and jumped as Chloe jumped as well, both exchanging blows with their weapon only for Chloe to gain the upper hand and jumped forward fast and backhanded Sakura sending her into the ground. Yukikiz started shooting at Chloe who quickly evaded and deflected the bullets. Chloe landed on the ground and dashed forward in a quick blur with an incoming slash pass Yukikas. The girl felt no cuts on her or anything, but it was then her pistols were sliced in half. Looking upset and glared at Chloe who had a smug smirk as she licked her lips. Sakura recovered and sent a strong kick at Chloe's face, sending Chloe into a nearby rock. Both of them widening their eyes seeing Chloe's red tendrils coming at them. They both evaded and dodged them. Yukikas got caught by them by the legs and was taken in the air and tossed across the battlefield. Yukikiz chan shouted Sakura, shouldn't you be worried about yourself? Chloe says in a sadistic voice with a mixture of glee as she and Sakura clashed again and were glaring at each other. Naruto within his armor eyed both Asagi and Ingrid who walked towards him calmly. Ready for this Ingrid? Asagi asked, holding her sword as Ingrid nodded. You two honestly have no chance in defeating me. Demon Uzumaki Shredder says, don't get all cocky. Why not come out of that armor and face us like a man? Asagi glared, no because it would ruin the surprise of who I really am under this armor. Demon Uzumaki Shredder said in a mock tone, maybe when we cut through that armor we will see what you will look like. Ingrid added as they heard him chuckle, that is where you are wrong my soon to be future dark elf wives. My armor is thick and mightier than any metal. Demon Uzumaki Shredder says lashing out his heat rod whip as they both dodged and evaded it, he lashed out a few more strikes from his whip Asagi evaded and recovered as she leaps high in the air and slashed her sword on his shoulder only for the blade that break in an instant which shocked her see? I told you no weapon can penetrate my armor. He replied by punching her, sending her skidding across. So his armor is impenetrable Ingrid says thinking of a plan or weakness to find in the armor. Let's make things more interesting shall we? Demon Uzumaki Shredder says unsheathing his Yuzu clan blade Ryujin Jaka. Asagi recovered and reached to her back to unsheath another sword. Ready to dance my beauties. He asked as they both glared and charged at him, he blocked each of their attacks. Facing each of them, Rigashaku Sama and Celestine are still clashing. Mace and Light Sword exchanged blows and clashed. Celestine backed off and jumped backwards in the air and unleashed to arc slash of light, sending it to Rigashaku Sama. Light Sovereignty. Celestine shouted out. Rigashaku Sama prepared her mace as she coated it in a white bubble and bashed at the light arc slash, sending it elsewhere across the battlefield. Black Vortex. Arigashaku outstretched her hand as a swirling black vortex appeared in her hand, as the darkness was pulling Celestine to her which surprised the elf goddess. Now caught in her hands Arigashaku Sama prepared her mace only for Celestine to brighten herself in light to blind Arigashaku Sama who dropped her. Which leaves Celestine a chance to attack her. Before she could stab her sword at the 8 foot tall dark elf queen. Her hand was caught in hair, Arigashaku's hair to be exact, which are tendrils, and yanked and tossed Celestine away as Arigashaku Sama followed her with her mace in hand. 
Celestine barely moved out of the way as Rigashaku bashed her mace on the ground, causing a minor tremor, and missed the elf goddess. Celestine gave out a battle cry and powered up her light sword as she slashed at Rigashaku Sama, who blocked with her mace, only for the light blade to cut her mace in half. Which surprised the Dark Queen that her weapon had been destroyed. Her fist was coated in a white bubble and sent her fist at Celestine, who quickly pulled out a light shield to tank the blow, only for it to send her back and destroy half of the shield, including damaging her gold armor a bit. She cringed feeling three ribs of hers broken. Rigashaku Sama unsheathed her sword of the dead Saunga. Celestine brought out a celestial bow and light arrows. Rigashaku Sama charged with preparing another attack. Celestine fired four light arrows. Rigashaku Sama sliced two, her hair tendril caught one, while the last one hit her left shoulder, making her cringe slightly in pain, before ripping the arrow out her shoulders glaring at Celestine. I can see you are not holding back. Neither will I Rigashaku is described as a mixture of darkness and Yakai Aura cloaked Rigashaku Sama as her eyes turned demonic red. If she's using her full power, I will have to awaken mine right now by unleashing the full power of light. Celestine says in thought, the battle still clashed. As both armies clashed at one another. All more mages continued their magic barrage of firebolts and ice spikes at the Shadokan, Xenomorphs were being burned, electrocuted to death, even stabbed and beheaded. Eviscerator was slaughtering elf knights, Falmor agents, and mages, he sprayed them with acid killing some and injuring them behind him, hordes of xenomorphs charged with him to break through their defense and magic barrage. Swarming them, attacking them with their tails and inner jaws. Eviscerator pinned down a Falmor agent and butcher him with its blades. Scorpion shoots his dual spears at two Falmor knights before shouting, dead over here. As he yanked them both and tossed them to Sub-Zero who created ice axes and chopped them. Reptile cloaked himself and started attacking elf knights who couldn't see him as he elbow charged at them, spit acid at them, and blasted acid force balls. He uncloaked himself and clawed at a knight that tried to hit him with an axe, only for Reptile to counter and spit acid at the knight's face, making him scream and wither on the ground. An Argonian female almost hit Reptile with an arrow as he barely dodged. He turned and saw her. She pulled out her sword and shield with Reptile smiling then hissing as he charged at her. Itachi is still clashing with Rinko and Murasaki, his Susanoo rib cage is currently shielding him from Murasaki's tremendous battle axe strikes while exchanging blows with his sword at Rinko's sword. That's a beautiful sword you got there, coated in black flames. Commented Rinko staring into his Sharingan, it is quite remarkable is it? Itachi replied back kicking her as she evaded the kick and lunged at him with a heavy strike, in which he dodged yet Murasaki attempted to attack him from the left with her axe, only for him to animate a Susanoo hand to backhand her sending her across the ground making a crater. He deactivated his Susanoo ribcage and jumped forward with his sword, increasing the black flames that revolved around it. Rinko recovered and evaded before he could make the strike. Murasaki came to her side with her axe in both hands. He's pretty good. Very good with that sword. Rinko says focusing on Itachi with Murasaki nodding as well. Yeah. It's a shame he's not our ally. We could really use someone like him in our Taimanen clan. Murasaki admitted she admired Itachi's swordsmanship. How can we beat him? He's too fast and can predict our movements. Rinko says with her guard up. Yes, you're right it's like he can see the future and see what moves we do he'll predict it. Murasaki says with a slight glare looking at Itachi who was waiting for them. Then an idea came to Murasaki. I've got a plan. Distract him. Murasaki says with Rinko nodding and charging at Itachi. She gripped her sword and unsheathed it going past Itachi in speed. Wine slice. She shouted with her katana sword after Itachi feeling a chunk being cut from his side, he flinched looking at her clutching his side. Before he could try and prepare a counter-attack several tentacles caught him and tossed him up into the sky. He grew his crow wings from his back and hovered into the air that was until he saw Rinko quickly sheathed her sword and raining down the sky was a large meteorite that Itachi was unprepared for as it impacted on him and sent him back on the ground, leaving an explosion and minor tremor across the battlefield. That had to hit him. Rinko says, let's not get her hopes up, after all he's a subordinate of Ariga and from the looks of it, he's definitely strong. Murasaki says. And how right she was. Itachi's Susanoo arm punched the meteorite off him as he rose up looking battered and slightly wounded. Damn. Cursed Rinko who couldn't believe he was still standing after that. That was very impressive. I think it's time to get serious. Itachi says flaring his Yakai chakra turning into a partial Tengu Kru Yakai as his sword was engulfed in large Amaterasu flames, with his Sharingan now shifting into the Manjekyo. Both anti-demon Kinoichi widened their eyes at this. They both charged at him with weapons in hand preparing for their strikes. He waited for them to strike, but what he did not expect was for Murasaki to spin around and around and around with her axe. Great axe. Sitsuga. 
She yelled out now spinning in a cyclone with her axe towards Itachi, who blocked with his Susanoo ribcage. While Murasaki was still spinning Rinko looked up as she called upon another meteorite, but this time a much bigger one. Murasaki was then grabbed by Itachi's Susanoo hand. Was that your best? He said in a monotone looking at her while she laughed a bit. No, but I'm best at making distractions. She says with a smug look making him confused, then widens his eyes, realizing what she meant his gaze shifted to Rinko then up in the sky, and saw a very large meteorite he tossed Murasaki away sending her into a rock making her pass out. Rinko jumped high in the air, and in a split second cut through the meteorite into pieces, causing a meteorite shower on Itachi, who animated his Susanao to its imperfect form, holding a gourd and shield. This shield repelled the minor meteor shower. After it stopped he looked where Rinko was standing only to find that she's nowhere in sight. Not you? She yelled, shooting a rope from her wrist and caught his left arm and yanked him out of his Susanoo and then ran up to him, preparing her blade. Before she could strike him Itachi vanished in a flock of crows surprising her and reappearing behind her kicking her. Recovering with a glare she charged at him both exchanging sword blows. Glaring at one another until they both backed away for more space. Damn he's good. I've thrown everything I got at him and he's still this good. She thought while mentally wishing he was on their side and at the same time found him quite good looking. She's interesting, she reminds me so much like Yugao. Was Itachi's thought remembering his Anbu comrade. Run out of options. He questioned. Let's say we finally go all out and finish this with one blow. May I have your name please? She said with her sword up. Itachi Ichiha. He answered with her smiling. So weasel kun. Cute, I'll give you mine then. My name is Akiyamarinko. She says with him growing a tick mark at the nickname she gave him. Then let's finish our duel. He said as she nodded. Rinko called upon all her power and strength into this final attack she will pull. Itachi readied his sword and amplified it with Yakai Chakra. Both with looks of determination they charged at one another, both swords out. In a split second slash they ran past each other. Itachi's left wing was cut off, with a cut on his cheek he turned and looked at Rinko. She fell on her knees with her sword sliced in half while she was cut at the shoulder. She looked at her broken sword and could see that she lost this duel. He walked towards her as she looked ready to accept her fate. You have done well. You and your friend did well. Surrender. He says with her having a dry chuckle. So I guess I'm becoming a dark elf, me and Murasaki both why not just kill us and get it over with. She says not looking into his eyes. Because my mistress wants you and your Kinoichi squad alive and I can't kill a beautiful woman such as yourself. He answered with her slightly blushing at him. He summoned six backhands. Apprehend her and her partner. Guard them. He says with them nodding as Itachi walked off to go fight in the war. The battle raged on and Ruaru beheaded two other Anuba soldiers with a few human knights assisting her. The jackal commander was clashing with the two human knights, killing them with his double-bladed crescent staff. As he and what remained of the vanguard charged at Emily who is in her auto turret hover round. She activated the zero system and fired everything in her arsenal at the incoming vanguard with the jackal commander getting headshot along with the rest. That was it for the army of Anubis as they all cheered happy that they defeated the dog demon army. Now all they had to do was focus on the Xenomorph horde and what remained of the Shadokan, also the undead army. But before they could continue to advance on defeating them. They heard rumbling and tumbling. They all looked to the left, Ruuru and Emily flew to the right side of the battlefield and paused with horrified expressions of what was seen coming. It was another army of Anubis. All charging and howling. And this army looked really massive. So so many Ruuru says in shock, dropping her axe. Emily looked completely taken back and shocked by this incoming massive army before her. They have only defeated the vanguard and what was left of them when Aboro's forces attacked them. This is the main force. This mass legion is much bigger than the 12,000 Yurikai army. Some of the knights, elves, and humans came and instantly looked shocked at what was charging at them. More dog demons in thousands. This this can't be real exclaimed a human knight holding a spear. This is impossible said an elf knight looking shocked. Is it possible for us to retreat now? Asked a human knight with a mace. Don't get cold feet. We can handle this. Shouted a Thalmor agent holding his dagger as he and his other Thalmor friends agreed. Easy for you to say. I'm not fighting that massive army of dog demons. Said a captain of knights dropping his sword and shield and began to run for his life, as did several other human knights and warriors who now lost the will to fight, knowing it was now pointless to take on another legion that massive. You cowards. Get back here shouted a Thalmor mage. Forget them. We can do this. On to battle. Shouted a Thalmor lieutenant as he and all the Thalmor charged at the incoming massive army of Anubis. Ruuru and Emily didn't know what to do. They were frightened and nervous. We need to fall back. Emily says with Ruuru nodding. 
Shirenu is currently clashing with Zabuza as her Naginta and his executioner's blade clashed and exchanged blows, causing sparks to fly, both were using their styles of water. Is that all you got? Taunted Zabuza in his oni demon form swinging his sword at her as she blocked and twirled her Naginta and sent a flow of water at his direction, in which he evaded and used his water dragon jutsu to knock her off. She recovered and lunged and jabbed her Najinata at Zabuza who blocks with his sword and pushed her back and swiped it only for her to shield it with a water wall as she backed up. They didn't miss Jutsu. He said as he casted a thick heavy mist blocking her eyesight. The mist. Damn, he's no joke. She thought listening out for him and using her other senses, he could be anywhere in this mist. She tensed as she quickly ducked. Dodging Zabuza's blade as. She impaled him with her Najinta. Arg. Grunted Zabuza, now you die. She says, thrusting it forward only for Zabuza to explode in water which shocked her, then her eyes widened in horror, suddenly realizing that wasn't the real him she turned only to get punched in the face, seeing it was him. She got back up looking angry as she charged at him with her Najinta, as he clashed with his sword. While this was going on Ripper and his pack lunged and hunted down some knights. Chloe, who is in her witchblade form, is still fighting Sakura and Yukikas. Yukikas has a spare set of handguns as she shoots her lightning bolt volley at Chloe, who is evading and dodging. Everything went slow-mo for her when she was dodging and ducking the gunshots. Sakura flipped her tantos and lunged at Chloe in an attempt to at least to try wounding her, but Chloe saw her and sidestepped and gave a strong kick to Sakura's side, making her scream in pain as she fell on her knee and was not fast enough to react when Chloe sent her another hard kick to the face that knocked out Sakura. Sakura-chan. Damn you. Yukikas now unleashes a barrage on Chloe who continues to dodge, evade, and start running. Chloe was in a sadistic giggling fit, seeing the frustration on Yukikas's face. Stop moving. Shouted Yukikas in anger, upset that Chloe is too fast for her aim, she decided to wait for the perfect shot. I got you now, you bitch. Yukikas now found a clean shot and shot two large shots at Chloe who didn't react as she got blasted. Yukikas looked smug, only for her smug to drop when the smoke cleared, revealing an unscathed Chloe who looked like she wasn't in any physical pain, which made Yukikas have a look of shock and disbelief. Surprised. Chloe asked with a wide grin, how? The petite asked, my witch blade and its armor are what protects me. Your guns are useless against me. The armor itself is impervious to anything, even projectile-like weapons. I'm pretty much glad the witch blade chose me as its host, and wielder Chloe explains as she runs up to Yukikas and sends a swift punch to the girl's face, sending her flying past out. Yukikas? Shouted her mother who was still in the middle of a clash with Zabuza, worried about her daughter. Worry about yourself will you? Zabuza finally gained the upper hand and knocked the Najinata out of her hands and trapped her in a water jutsu prison. Demon Uzumaki Shredder is clashing with both Asagi and Ingrid. Asagi knew she was going to need to tap into her dormant power to defeat her opponent and as she did by transforming. On was her beautiful skin replaced with blue skin, yellow slit eyes, her hair was no longer dark blue, but silver. She was now a totally different person. Ingrid saw Asagi's transformation as she prepared her sword coating it in dark flames. What is this? Demon Uzumaki Shredder asked, let's just say I'm an improved version of my human counterpart. Spoke Asagi in her now inner demon form as she lunged at him and summoned a new sword so fast that she slashed at him, leaving one mark on his armor that surprised him. Now let's see who you are under that armor. Demon Asagi says with a chilling smile with Ingrid following suit with her sword coated in dark flames. Bring it on. Demon Uzumaki Shredder says charging at her as both weapons clashed causing a shock wave. Meanwhile with Arigashaku Sama and Celestine. Celestine glowed a radiant bright light now transforming. The light died down. And as the goddess of light, it's my duty to protect humanity from you. Ariga Discordia. Shouted the fused voice of Celestine and another female, standing around 5'9 with her hair still blonde, but lengthened and went down to her ankles, green streaks in her hair. Her outfit consists of a layered white dress, along with numerous gold accessories in the form of a necklace, laurel crown, fibula, arm bands, arm brace, armored sleeve, and ornaments secured by belts. She wields a gold staff with a blue handle in her right hand and sports a mirror shield attached to her left arm by a leather band. It makes no difference if you transform Celestine. Because when this is all over. I'm so looking forward to seeing Narukan mount you once you are a dark elf. Arigashaku Sama says. You are honestly no better than Vault. Turning all females against their will into dark elves. Making humans and high elves such as myself renounce our heritage and become the very thing we do not wish to become. Shot back Celestine. You just Celestine. Unlike that bastard. I don't desire a SAG's empire, I desire the resurrection of the Dark Elf race, along with Nerukun reviving his clan. Surely you know me, and Chloe is already carrying his children. Arigashaku Sama says, putting her big hand over her stomach. 
Celestine could see the life growing within Ariga, she sees four life signatures inside Ariga's womb that's still developing. You will be the very first to have his child next after you are turned. Ariga Shakusama says with Celestine narrowing her green eyes. Enough talk. Let's end this once and for all. Celestine says holding her staff. How right you are. Dragon Twister. Ariga Shakusama yelled, unleashing a deadly vortex at Celestine who shielded herself with her shield. Ariga Shakusama coated herself in darkness. Let darkness take you. The Dark Queen says charging at Celestine with the darkness following her. Celestine herself charged with the light following her as well. Both impacted and caused a big shockwave and the sky split and divided. Darkness and light was divided and currently clashing. On the battlefield. Raging fireballs flying across the battlefield, lightning strikes, eye spikes, explosions all out. The sounds of weapons clashing and clanging, battle cries filled the skies. Dead Xenomorphs that were burned, frozen to death, stabbed, beheaded. Some were still alive with Eviscerator leading them to kill Celestine's forces and the Thalmor. Just about 1569 Xenomorphs were killed in the battle. But they had plenty of nasty kills on their victims and enemies, even taking some of them to their summoning realm to become hosts for more Xenomorphs. Shadokans were holding up fairly, but Thalmor mages used every destructive magic in their arsenal. To take them down while some still fought harder against them. 843 Shadow Khans were defeated. But still put up a good fight. Ariga Shakusama's personal army of the undead were also faring well against the forces of light. All these undead soldiers consisted of dead ancient dark elves who died ages ago in service to the last royal family of the Discordia family. Heroinu mercenaries who were killed by the dark Yuzu elf empire were also put into the mix of this undead army and became loyal to Ariga Shakusama and will follow her orders without question. Due to Ariga Shakusama's sword of the dead, Sanga can summon the dead. Only 753 undead soldiers had been defeated by the forces of light. As for the army of Anubis. The very best legion out of the Xenomorph horde and Shadokan tribes put up much more of a bloody battle. And have made the most lethal kills. Like that of an evil flood that washes away all that lay before them. Even if you defeated the first battalion and vanguard, the next batch or in this case the main force are a force to be reckoned with, chances are that you will not survive against this mass legion they will relentlessly attack and kill anyone in sight, but they are under direct orders from their emperor and empress to not kill any females only the males in this battle. Both Aboro and Celestine's forces fended off the vanguard, Aboro's allied forces only defeated half of the vanguard, Celestine's forces finished off the remaining forces of the vanguard, which caused another reinforcement to instantly arrive fast, and their numbers much larger than the Uruk High Legion, only 36000 were defeated by both Aboro's allied forces and Celestine's forces put together, and this was only the vanguard. The Jackal Commander is now leading the Mass Legion at all the Thalmor, and what many other forces Celestine had with Yujido in tow, slashing her claws at some Thalmor, and Fu flying using her scale blast on the enemies. Claudia, Alicia, Maya, even Haku, and Robin cornered Kagaya, Ruru, and Emily. Surrender Kagaya, we don't have to fight anymore. Claudia says looking at the three are restrained by Robin's devil fruit power. Haku had frozen Emily's hover round turret. Why should we? You're serving the wrong person Claudia, don't you know what Ariga Kagaya says, but Robin cut in. Her name is Ariga Shakusama. Corrected Robin. Well Ariga Shakusama, don't you know what she's about to do? Do you even care what happens if she wins, questioned Kagaya with Claudia frowning. She's going to turn us all into dark elves. She's basically removing our human heritage and race. Please listen to Claudia. Alicia. Please. If you help her now all you will do is just condemn all females into becoming dark elves against their will. Kagaya reasoned hoping to get through the two. Claudia and Alicia looked at one another knowing their friend and ally was right. But they have no choice in the matter, they already are going to accept their fates as dark elves and be with their one savior who saved them from a fate worse than death, they rather become dark elves than be condemned as Sag's toys for Volt's ridiculous dream and lust. This new life maybe won't be as bad as they think, even if they sided with Celestine, they'd still become dark elves regardless. I'm afraid that ship has sailed Kagaya. We have to atone for our sin of having Kuroinu and Volt go after Ariga Shakusama, we were the ones responsible for having them involved in the war against Celestine and Ariga Shaku. We never knew Volt's intentions and plot for us all, if Ariga and Chloe never left, our fates and lives would have condemned the life of slavery and becoming whores for any man and beast, we are to blame for this. Maya decided to speak looking at Kagaya speaking for Claudia and Alicia. Ruru and Kagaya widened their eyes at Maya's words, while looking away knowing this is technically not just their fault, but also Celestine's fault in trusting Volt and Kuroinu so easily, and thought they could depend on them to defeat Ariga to end the war. So nothing we say can change your mind. Kagaya asked. We both know how this is going to end. Kagaya just surrender and stop fighting, accept your fate. 
said Claudia with both of her friends, and Emily looked at one another, seeing that they didn't have much of a choice. They surrendered knowing they lost this. The battle kept raging on. The forces of light were losing this fight. The Uzumaki demon Shredder continued his clash with both inner demon Asagi and Hell Knight Ingrid. He backflipped and shot his Fibricard whip at Ingrid's hands and yanked her with enough strength to pull her off the ground she dropped her sword in the process. Sent flying and crashed into the ground before he could try to attack, he instantly turned around seeing Asagi attempt to attack him from behind, he shot a net from his wrist net launcher and caught Asagi into it. Ingrid used her dark flames to summon her sword and lunged at Naruto and delivered a burning dark slash upon him. Not that it damaged his armor, but to her surprise his chest armor opened and fired a blue energy beam from it directly at her. She suddenly became encased in crystallized eye solid to the core. He turned only to get struck by Asagi knocking him down. Damn. She's tough. How did she break free from the net? Though Naruto was within his armor. While looking at the damage report which was only 5%, inner demon Asagi charged and readied her fist to punch demon Uzumaki Shredder. He delivered a punch also as both clashed causing shockwaves. Both grappled each other glaring at one another the power and strength was so great that it knocked both of them away from one another. Inner demon Asagi recovered, first dusting the dirt off her as she saw demon Uzumaki Shredder stood up looking at her. He's good. I'll give him that. But I will not lose. Thought inner demon Asagi. Both began to charge at another and would exchange blows with their fists, demon Uzumaki Shredder countered a few and managed to see an opening she left out, he jousted his free fist into her stomach making her gag and sent her crashing. He prepared himself only to wince when he saw her pick up a boulder and toss it at him, he wasted no time in unleashing his heat rod whip and lashed the rock in half. After he did that she was nowhere in sight, he had no time to react when she was behind him and managed to pick him up and surprisingly spun around and around and around and released him sending him up the sky as she jumped up summoning another blade and she decided to perform her one attack as several copies of Asagi made themselves known and all impacted upon demon Uzumaki Shredder causing an explosion. She landed on the ground looking up seeing him falling and crashed onto the ground. Before she could go see if he was defeated she was surprisingly slashed across her back by an enraged Chloe, who is still in her witchblade form. How dare you harm him like that you bitch. Chloe read no lunging at inner demon Asagi who evaded and dodged all her moves and attacked like no tomorrow. Chloe's hand suddenly ignited in fire as she blasted volley shots of fireballs at Asagi, who also evaded them. Getting more upset Chloe dashed over so fast that it caught Asagi off guard and Chloe delivered a stinging slap to her face. Why you dark elf bitch. Inner demon Asagi says feeling that slap on her face as she in turn slapped Chloe back. Who grunted in pain from the slap as she again slapped Asagi's face much harder. Both continued their bitch slap. Enough of this. Inner Asagi shouted sending a right hook to Chloe's face sending her off as she followed and pinned Chloe to the ground holding her in a chokehold. I'll deny him a whore like you. Inner Asagi says that until he was hit by something in her back she turned her head around and saw a dart with a cord attached to it, she followed it and saw it came from demon Uzumaki Shredder's wrist. He discharged lightning into the dart as it shocked inner demon Asagi, who screamed feeling the electricity increase she had let go of Chloe, as he kept shocking her forcing her to revert back to her human self. Which was successful that he retracted the dart as she stood there dazed and shocked, stunned that everything she saw was a blur. Her vision began to clear only to see Chloe in her sights with a pissed off look. Chloe delivered one last slap at Asagi that sent the Taman and leader rolling across the ground now unconscious. Now that they defeated her they turned towards the Dome of Darkness and Light which held Urigashaku Sama and Celestine. Both clashed inside the dome. Celestine blasted a light beam at Urigashaku Sama who used her darkness to suck it up. Which surprised her. The Dark Queen charged at Celestine with her Sword of the Dead Sanga, Celestine summoned up a Sword of Light and clashed as they exchanged blows. They glared at one another, then pushed each other back as Arigashaku Sama punched the ground, summoning the hands of the dead in an attempt to grab and snare Celestine who stopped it with a light wall. Arigashaku Sama raised her fist coated with a quake power she punched the light wall, cracking it as Celestine moved away and fired a barrage of light beams and light balls at Arigashaku Sama who tanked the hits and charged at the elf goddess. Celestine aimed her staff at the Dark Queen's hand while she's holding her sword and fired a light beam to knock the sword out of her hands. It was then Arigashaku Sama's nails extended into very long sharp claws and did a flurry of strikes with these claws at Celestine, who did receive a scar on her shoulder, leaving claw marks. Arigashaku Sama licked her long tongue on her clawed hands, tasting Celestine's blood. B X Q U I S I T E she says looking at Celestine with her red eyes and fangs that she grew. Before Celestine could react, Arigashaku Sama appeared in front of the elf goddess so fast that she flinched at the sight and raised her shield only for the Dark Queen to slash her claws at the shield, cutting it to pieces. Then Arigashaku Sama picked Celestine up and slammed her into the ground. 
you're nothing. Without your precious light. Slam. You're selfish and naive and even stupid for believing in Volt to simply take me down. Trusting him so easily from the start not knowing what he could do, what he's capable of. Foolish wretch. Slam. And now you are trying to end the Dark Elf race. I think not. Humans and High Elves together no more will have supremacy. That age is over this ERA is over. The age of Dark Elves begins here and now. Ariga Shakusama said in a demonic voice slamming Celestine's face into the ground over and over again. How did you think this all started in the first place? Humans and High Elves were arrogant that they went so far to belittle and dominate Dark Elves, enslaving them. Most Dark Elves were killed by humans and High Elves, even taped which drove Ariga Discordia to do the same thing to the human females with monsters when she was her old self. And because of Ariga's past action Celestine and the shield maiden seeked out Volt and his band of mercenaries to kill and defeat Ariga along with Chloe. Dark Elves were treated harshly in this world and never got the chance of recognition and acknowledgement due to the feud between humans and High Elves. Chloe is a prime example given how her past was with humans, and Ariga took her in as her ward, her friend, and surrogate daughter, which explains her hatred for humans. With Naruto as an exception who treated her well. But all of that is going to change when Celestine loses. The era of humans and high elves is no more. Just as Ariga Shakusama stated. The era of the dark elves begins. Ariga Shakusama's claws glowed green as she picked up Celestine who was banged up. It's over Celestine. You have lost. I could kill you here and now and be done with it. But I have other plans for you, death would be too easy. Besides I've decided your fate and that is to become my husband's concubine and become a dark elf. The dark queen says now ripping Celestine's god half out of her revealing it to be a green haired woman as Celestine reverted back to normal. The fighting soon stopped when Celestine was defeated. The war was over. Everyone surrenders Celestine humbly knowing that she lost. And like that every human knight to elven knight along with surviving Thalmors and mages drop their weapons and put their hands up and surrender. The forces of the Dark Elf Yuzu Empire cheered loudly and gave a battle cry victory that they won the war. I believe it's time we announce this at Celestine's kingdom. She will announce to all of the Ostia that we own this world now. Ariga Shakusama says with Celestine submissively bowing down with no choice. A few hours later, Celestine's kingdom. The people were astounded by Celestine's defeat as the elf goddess called upon a mass announcement. On the balcony she looked down at the many civilians that depended on her to win this battle as she turned over and saw Riga Shakusama, Demon Uzumaki Shredder, Chloe and Itachi, while the rest of the inner circle were guarding the anti-demon Kinoichis and currently have them all detained. With a sigh she turned back at the massive crowd before her and began to speak. People of the Ostia. I have an announcement to make, I am terribly sorry for failing you all in losing this battle, I've done all I could. Today is a new change for Iostia. She said with the populace gasping in surprise as they continued to listen to her. As of right now. The age of humans and high elves alike including other species will hereby be under the rule of the Dark Elf Yuzu Empire. All of our allied kingdoms are under the rule of the new empire. I declare that Iostia is now owned and ruled by the Dark Elf Yuzu Empire. I present to you your rulers. Celestine says, stepping away revealing Ariga Shakusama and Uzumaki Demon Shredder, with many looking in surprise and awe. Greetings people of the Ostia. My name is Demon Shredder Uzumaki, I will be your emperor with Ariga Shakuchan as my empress. Things will now change here in this world that we have conquered. The era of Dark Elves begins. There will be no rebellions, if I so much as hear of a rebellion in the empire, there will be the penalty of death, public execution or imprisonment for life, depending on your actions of rebellion. Shredder says with others gasping below in shock and with worry. And so on the people of Ostia had no choice but to follow and support both their empress and emperor as word had spread all over of what had begun. Dark elves who were in exile and hiding and even from other lands had heard of the rise of the Dark Elven Empire and decided to come out of hiding and join this empire. New members joined ranks in the Dark Elf Yuzu Empire as Ariga Shaku and Naruto found these new members in a prison that Celestine had and pardoned them in return to join them. The first to be released was Donna Beneviento, who was a demented woman with a doll named Angie. The second were three Dark Elves. An Assassin. A Nightingale, and last Grace Campbell. The third. A tall woman with silver hair and pale skin with a long left arm, she's a demon named Lady Devaman. The fourth. Is a pink-haired man with blue eyes wearing a dark robe, his name Marluxia. The fifth. Morgan the Succubus. These were dangerous criminals that Celestine locked up though Grace wasn't that dangerous she's a dark elf civilian that's been thrown in prison without a trial. Now these convicts are released from their shackles and join the Empire. After that, there was a big celebration for the Empire as they had a great big party to celebrate their victory of finally winning and claiming all of the Ostia. Now their focus will be directed at the elemental nations. 
in three days they will return back to the elemental nations they are getting ready to pack up and prepare their prisoners for travel to be turned into dark elves. There is no one left to oppose their empire in this world. All enemies are dead. And so three days went by as Rigashaku-sama created a very massive portal for all her forces and future dark elves who are in chains and shackles being escorted into the portal. Heading back to Yuzu. The Bora was among them as she was flanked by six Amurai Khans. Bolt however is abandoned in the dungeon to continue going through his or her version of hell. Other alliances Celestine had. Princess Kachu, Nina, Henrietta, her brother, and Helga along with Queen Lena and Anna Florence are also being transferred to Yuzu to become Dark Elves. The Tasmanians were also being transferred. As everyone went into the portal and went back to Yuzu. Elemental Nations Yuzu. Now at the Yuzu Kage Tower you could see a dark-skinned woman with blonde hair, honey-brown eyes, and big tits. Wearing a green Hayori and tight blue pants she has a purple diamond on her forehead. Long pointed ears. Who is this? Why is Tsunade Senju now a dark elf? Before Rigashaku-sama returned to Ostia to check on the progress of the invasion after Maya was turned into a dark elf it was Tsunade's turn. As the dark elf Senju woman is currently drinking sake. She of course missed Shizune including her godson. She wondered when they were going to come back. Only for her answer to be answered. She saw a large portal appear and she got up to go see if it's them. Her eyes widened seeing the mass group before her as she smiled. We are home. Said Demon Uzumaki Shredder. And now the elemental nations will be in a big surprise of what's coming to them soon. Tsunade Sama. Said a surprised Shizune who saw her mentor as a dark elf as she ran to go hug her sensei who hugged her back. It's great seeing you again, Shizune. Where's Naruto come? Said the dark elf Senju. I'm right here. He answered still in his armor as she blinked looking at his new armor. Nice armor there. It looks new and advanced. She says admiring it. Well now that we have returned. Let's set up shop. We have officially conquered my former homeworld. All threats are eliminated. Now we will focus our attention here in the elemental nations. Harigashaku Sama says. We will now turn and convert our prisoners into dark elves. She says looking at Celestine knowing Celestine will be the first to be turned along with that green haired girl who is her god half. In the next few hours after getting settled in Yuzu. Allies alike were getting comfortable in their new homes here in Yuzu. Well the prisoners are being held in the dungeon until it was the time to be turned into Dark Elves. Celestine is going to be the first to be turned. The Pit Chamber. Now in the chamber, Celestine was brought here as she was flanked by Samurai Khans. Rigashaku Sama was present. Naruto and Chloe, including other women who are interested in him, are currently out together while she converts her rival and enemy into a Dark Elf. Itachi Ichiha wasn't around, he is currently settling in with his lovers Victoria and Rosalind along with other nuns and female knights. While also seeming to be getting to know the Taman and Kanoichi's Rinko and Murasaki who are with him. Since both of them belong to him now since he fought them. They will all be on Dark Elves soon. She even plans on having Naruto be the first to take her virginity and get her pregnant. Rigashaku Sama stripped Celestine and brought her closer to the pit. You know what to do. She says with Celeste looking uneasy at the pit as Celestine began to drop herself in the pit and would begin to transform into a Dark Elf. Her half-god looked at the pit with worry seeing Celestine in there changing. The process sped up fast. Changing Celestine's appearance. It was after five minutes Rigashaku pulled Celestine out the pit, revealing the former goddess of light to be an actual pure-blooded dark elf. Her god half blinked in surprise seeing her fuse partner as a dark elf. Rigashaku sama smiled wide at this, her rival is now an attractive dark elf, and now it's her god half's turn along with the Taimanin. She couldn't wait for Naruto to mount Celestine who is now a dark elf. Now it's your turn. She says to Celestine's god half. With Naruto, now spending time with Chloe, Robin, Yujito, Fu, and Haku. The others that are destined to be his concubines are currently going to be turned into Dark Elves. Now that they've returned here in the Elemental Nations things are going to change. Hinoha, the Sandame Hokage is sitting in his office looking at Jureya who was giving him his recent report. This report disturbed him. Surely every village in the Elemental Nations has heard of a monk, priest, and priestess purge all over the Elemental Nations. Every academy, temple, shrine, and chapel throughout the elemental nations was destroyed and purged, and no one knew who did it, which caused every daimyo to be on high alert, knowing they have their own priests and priestesses in their capital and respective country. He knows his son's friend is a priest and is a member of the Guardian 12 for the fire daimyo. Luckily he wasn't attacked or targeted seeing that he's in fire country. Who killed all the monks? Priests and priestesses who did such an evil and vile thing. There are only two theories. One. Hirachimaru could be the culprit, but that doesn't make sense. Hirachimaru couldn't have possibly pulled off such a thing and is not dumb enough to reveal himself, knowing he likes to be crafty and well-hidden, his former student is too smart. 2. The Akatsuki that Jureya told him about, could they be the cause of this? 
he wasn't exactly sure on what the Akatsuki intended to do. Since they are now a criminal organization, a group of S-rank shinobi. Jiraiya even told him a rumor that they are also targeting Jinchiriki, but for what purpose Jiraiya had often told him that Kumo and Taki were missing the two tails, and the seven tails had gone missing. Could the Akatsuki have gotten to them already? He wasn't sure, but he had to assume that was the case. But both these theories are wrong. Now why is that? Because Jiraiya came across one of the destroyed shrines of the monks and found a near-death monk who was struggling to survive. As he told Jiraiya of what actually happened. They were attacked by creatures in clad dark, blue skin, and red eyes, some looked humanoid, while the rest resembled squids, mantis, crabs, and many like creatures including bats. Jiraiya had asked the dying monk about who led the attack. The monk however unfortunately died before he could tell Jiraiya. Which means he lost a lead to who possibly is the one responsible for this purge. Now they are trying to figure out the third theory of who was responsible for the mass murders of every priest, monks, and priestess. The East Monk Jiraiya had tried to find was dead, his informants told him the East Monk lived in Iowa in the mountains. When Jiraiya got there he was too late, he saw the mountains crumbled and destroyed. How was that possible? Who could have the strength or power to destroy mountains? Only Abijuu could have that type of strength. Sandane gave a big sigh as Jiraiya told him everything. Yet there was still no sign of Naruto either. He had looked all over the elemental nations for the boy and looked out for sightings of Hachishaki-sama. Yet he couldn't find them. This is indeed disturbing, still no sign of Naruto, and we don't know who's the culprit of these attacks upon monks and priestesses. Saratobi says with Jiraiya frowning, Hachishaki-sama probably doesn't want us to find Naruto, and if anything I will admit she's doing a damn good job at hiding him from us. The Toad Sage admitted, but what do you expect from the infamous urban legend, still. The boy was supposed to stay here in this village, it was supposed to be his home where he could be loyal to it, and that urban legend has been hiding him for 12 years. How is it that she found an interest in him and took him from us before we could get him? Saratobi says with a frown, my guess is as good as yours sensei. If only we could find some way to find him. Jiraiya assured, are you sure you have checked all over the elemental nations? Saratobi asked with Jiraiya nodding, positively, I checked every nook and cranny all over the nations. Jiraiya answered with the sandame frowning further, what about that village? Saratobi questioned with Jiraiya raising a brow, surely you don't mean Yuzu? The land and country is in ruins and hasn't been visited two in centuries after Yuzu's fall. After how we were the ones to let Yuzu die by selling them out just so we can have Kashina. Jiraiya says with Hiruzen having a frown still. Perhaps you are right, but just where is she hiding him? The old cage said with his student shrugging, he's out there Jiraiya. I know it and I can feel it in my old bones. We are just not looking hard enough. He says, sensei I've been trying. I had my spies and the toads to be on the lookout for Naruto. They would notify me when they saw him. Jirei replied, alright. Just keep your eyes open, I want him found, and when he is found I'm going to have Inoichi to wipe his memories clean of whatever influence Hachishaki-sama has over him. So that we can start him fresh. Hiruzen says with Yureya nodding, I'll do what I can, sensei. Jiraiya says as he leaves out the window. The Sandame sighed. He just hopes Jiraiya could find Naruto before or after the Chunin exams that are coming up. Yuzu, one day it has been as Arigashaku-sama had turned some of the prisoners into dark elves, including Itachi's women and Naruto's. Now in the throne room sat only Arigashaku-sama, Chloe, and Naruto. As the three of them looked at the now transformed dark elves. Celestine, Claudia, Prim, Alicia, Kagaya, Ruuru along with the Tasmanians. Including Celestine's god half, the three of them smiled looking at the group. I hope you all are prepared to be dominated by my husband. Says Arigashaku-sama with a soggy frowning, husband where? I only see a child in this room. She says, that child is my husband. The dark elf fusion replied as they all had looks of shock on their faces, except Claudia, Prim, and Alicia, since they already knew about Naruto's identity. What? Shouted Yukikas with a look of disbelief as did Ingrid and Sakura. Asagi had wide eyes. This was the demon Uzumaki Shredder she had fought. Celestine looked taken back as well. The mere boy is demon Uzumaki Shredder, all this time they thought they were fighting a man. Surprised. Naruto says with a smile while all of them found this hard to believe. Asagi couldn't believe she got her ass kicked by a mere boy. And now. Naruto-kun is going to put on a show for all of you, starting with you. Arigashaku says pointing at the now dark elf turned Celestine, who looked shocked. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.